welcome to another segment of the Turtis Pavlov project. In this project, I want to talk about resonance and the genius of Johann Sebastian Bach. Now, resonance uh, refers to the richness of sound produced by a particular note. Uh, on an instrument like this, each note has a particular frequency. There is a primary frequency to it, but then because of the way that uh, uh, the instrument vibrates, there are secondary frequencies that are generated uh, uh, by the instrument. So, you know, if I play this note, the vibrations of the string, of course, are translated through the bridge down to the surface of the instrument and then there is a sound post inside that translates the vibrations to the bottom of the instrument but not all those parts of the instrument vibrate at the same frequency and so there's a rich sound created by the variety of frequencies that are activated by a particular note and this particular note is G which actually uh, vibrates the G string uh, we don't, can't see this on the camera here, but you can actually see the G string vibrate. That's, similar, that's a C, which vibrates the C string. So when I play this note, we're actually hearing it's the additional frequencies created by the vibrations of the, the lower note. So certain strings on the instrument have much greater resonance, particularly the open strings. And you can tell that because the, it's a bright sound and the sound lasts quite a while. Uh, this note, that doesn't last quite as long. It kind of dies as soon as I quit playing it. And it doesn't sound as rich. That's an F sharp and it doesn't activate other parts of the instrument in as rich a fashion as the G. Does. Now, why am I talking about this and how is this related to Johann Sebastian Bach? Well, Bach uh, was a church musician. He composed music to be played in churches. And if you think about the churches that were uh, people used in those days, they were mostly made out of stone, which means that there were very few absorbent surfaces. So if you play a particular note, it's liable to stay in the room bouncing around. The sound is liable to continue to bounce around after you're finished playing it. So the, the opening segment that I played was from the uh, Courant, uh, which is uh, the third movement of the first of the cello suites. And there are a couple of things that are remarkable about those notes. First of all, they're maximally resonant. This is a G, which activates the open string. That is an open string, and so it's pretty bright. And that's an open string, which is pretty bright. So he's picked highly resonant parts of the instrument for those notes. Uh, you couldn't have picked more resonant notes to play. And because those notes continue to be in the room, uh, when you change notes, you're actually also hearing the previous ones. And uh, the genius of Bach comes in the fact that he composed the music in such a way that these notes could actually overlap and that would enhance the musical experience. So uh, let me uh, play the, uh, the entire uh, uh, piece here and see if you can uh, hear these kinds of components. You notice those are also open strings. I mean, it, and, it, and it fits the music and it, it makes it really bright. And the next one is those, uh, those, those are also maximally resonant. So he knew exactly what he was doing and how to make terrific sound 
from the instrument that uh, I was composing for, which was the cello, which has the same arrangement of strings as the viola, although at a lower register. So these cello things work really well on a viola. All right, so here we go. Thank you. 